So most of the reactivity that we are going to be talking about today is going to be present at the carbon atom that I'm highlighting in green. Now, understand that when it comes to how reactive are these carboxylic acid derivatives, the most reactive is going to be at the top, the acid chlorides, and the least reactive is going to be the amides, as you can see in the bottom of the trend. Now, the reactivity of each one of these carboxylic acid derivatives is determined by induction, induction effects, <clears throat> resonance, sterics, and the quality of the living group. As I just mentioned, acyl chlorides are the most reactive derivatives. When we think about it in terms of induction, the electronegative chlorine is going to enhance the electrophilic character of the carbonyl. Because remember that that chlorine is an electron withdrawing group. So since is that carbon is sitting between two electronegative atoms is going to be more electropositive. This can be clearly illustrated if we look at the resonance structures that can be shown for these acid chlorides, specifically out of um, the acyl halides or the acid halides. The chlorine atom does not donate much electron density to the carbonyl carbon. So what we see when we look specifically at the resonance structure, the first one is created by just putting the electrons up to the oxygen atom. So as you can see now, we have a carbocation and an oxygen anion created. But understand that if you think that those lone pairs in the oxygen in the chlorine are going to be donated onto the carbon um, cation, that uh, resonance structure, which is the last one that we see here, is not a, sig a significant contributor. But always remember that in this case, the reason is because chlorine is more electronegative than that <clears throat> carbon atom. So donation is not something that chlorine is going to inherently do. When it comes to the amides, they are the least reactive acid, carboxylic acid derivative. If we think about it in terms of the factors of induction and resonance, we can see why this is. The nitrogen atom is less electronegative than chlorine or oxygen. So when we compare it to the other carboxylic acid counterparts, this explains why it's the least reactive. If we look at uh, the resonance structures that can actually come up for amides, understand that if we do uh, resonance for a simple amide, as you can see in the bottom of the slide, when the electrons are put up to the oxygen, now our carbon atom is going to have a positive charge. But in this instance, that lone pair on the nitrogen, which I'm highlighting in red, is actually going to be donating into that carbocation, creating a significant contributor. And one of the things that can be observed many times when amide bonds um, are shown is that that carbon nitrogen bond actually tends to be more planar than tetrahedral okay because the donation of that lone pair actually is pretty uh strong when that nitrogen is donating a lone pair to the carbon atom <clears throat> now in the past, we have observed chemistries for aldehydes and ketones, okay? And we know that aldehydes and ketones are also electrophilic functional groups. But remember that they do not undergo substitution, okay? Now, 
when it comes to carboxylic acid derivatives that it is different because in carboxylic acid derivatives they can undergo what is called nucleophilic acyl substitution and what happens in this <clears throat> instances is that that leaving group that is present in specifically carboxylic acid derivatives okay so this is the group that distinguishes all of them that is just designated with the letter z it can be leaving the system because it is a good leaving group so what that means is that what we are going to observe in time and time again in many of the reactions with carboxylic acid derivatives is that we are going to see a nucleophilic attack at the carbonyl carbon then that group that distinguishes each one of the carboxylic acid derivatives will leave as a leaving group and then the nucleophile is going to take its place that's why it is called a substitution Nucleophilic acyl substitution has a general mechanism of two core steps and understand that this mechanism is going to be common to many of the functional groups that are part <clears throat> of the carboxylic acid derivatives. The mechanism goes as follows. Our nucleophile is going to attack the carbon in the carbonyl, then I'm going to highlight it as I talk about it. So the nucleophile goes and attacks the carbon in the carbonyl. As you can see, I'm just retracing those red arrows. Then the electrons go up to the oxygen. Then that creates an intermediate in which now my oxygen atom is negatively charged. I'm going to create a tetrahedral intermediate, as you can see. I'm just going to highlight it. So this tetrahedral intermediate is what this is. <clears throat> and then when the electrons from the oxygen come down to reform the C double bond O, we are going to have, so electrons are coming down to reform the C double bond O, then we're going to have that Z group, meaning that group that makes carboxylic acid derivatives their own identity is going to be expelled from the intermediate and we're going to now have the formation of the carbonyl group and the placement of the nucleophile in the final product. Now, Understand that it is important to note that in that um, step number two, when the leaving group is leaving, we are always going to be forming or reforming that carbonyl. Okay, remember hydrogen and carbon generally cannot be expelled as leaving groups, and it is very important to remember as we proceed talking about the different conversions that are going to be happening with the carboxylic acid derivatives. The first set of reactions that we're going to talk about is specifically the preparation of acid chlorides. When it comes to acid chlorides, understand that they are going to be synthesized, as I mentioned previously, from a carboxylic acid. But specifically, if you're making an acid chloride, you're going to be reacting your carboxylic acid with thionyl chloride, in other words, SOCl2, and that's how you make the acid chloride. The mechanism for this reaction is split into two parts. The first part is the conversion of the OH into a good leaving group. As you can follow the steps that I'm going to narrate in the bottom, please follow the red arrows. In the first step of the reaction, the carboxylic acid is <clears throat> going to function as our nucleophile. 
And what it's going to do is that the electrons from <clears throat> the single bond to OH, one of the lone pairs in the oxygen is going to be forming now a carbon oxygen double bond. Then the original carbon oxygen double bond is going to be the source of electron that is going to attack the sulfur in the thionyl chloride and that's going to push the electrons up to the oxygen. As you can see we are going to be in uh, creating a molecule in which now the oxygen atom is bonded to the sulfur and the thionyl chloride and the oxygen that is negatively charged the one that is bonded to the sulfur is going to move electrons down and we are going to have a chloride ion leave from the system. In the next step of the reaction, the chloride ion that was pushed is then deprotonating our molecule and the electrons go up to the oxygen. So as you can see now, we have created an excellent leaving group in the molecule. And that is highlighted in a green box. The second part of the mechanism is a typical nucleophilic acyl substitution. Okay, So the chloride forming the first part is the nucleophile in this second step. Now, as you can see, the chloride ion is going to add nucleophilically to the carbon that is double bonded to oxygen, moving the electrons up to the oxygen atom. And then when the oxygen moves the electrons down, it's going to be releasing uh, a compound that is going to have sulfur and two oxygens. And that compound is going to degrade to make sulfur dioxide gas and the chloride ion. As you can see, that is the last step. Whenever you're proposing the mechanism for the preparation of acid chloride, the degradation of that SO2Cl does not need to be illustrated. The next reaction that we're going to be exploring is the hydrolysis of acid chlorides. When it comes to this reaction, what we're doing is that our acid chloride is reacting with water. Remember, acid chlorides or acid halides in general are going to be the most reactive out of our carboxylic acid derivatives. So, as you can see here, when we react it with water, we are just going to take our acid chloride and convert it back to the carboxylic acid. The mechanism of this reaction, as you can see, is in the bottom of the slide. And I'm going to narrate now the different molecules and arrows that you see. In the first step of the reaction, we're going to have the water act as a nucleophile and is going to attack the carbon in the carbonyl in our acid chloride. Then the electrons are going to go up to the oxygen. We are going to create a tetrahedral intermediate in which now when the electrons of the oxygen ion that was created due to the uh, arrows in the first step, when we are trying to reform the carbonyl, we are going to have the chloride ion be removed from the molecule as a leaving group. In the last step of the reaction, we are going to be doing a proton transfer in which a proton is going to be removed from the water that was added to the carbon in the carbonyl to give rise to the carboxylic acid. Understand that in this reaction, since HCl is a byproduct of the hydrolysis, typically we have pyridine used to neutralize it. So in this reaction, um, that's how you get rid of the HCl that was formed. And as you can see, pyridine is going to be a nitrogen base heterocyclic amine. We're going to be talking about amines towards 
the end of the semester, but pretty much you can see the acid-base reaction that is happening between pyridine and HCl, in which pyridine acts as a base and deprotonates um, the HCl acid, and at the end, it makes an ammonium chloride salt. Acid chlorides are reacted with an alcohol to make an ester. So as you can see, acid chlorides or and even uh, carboxylic acid derivatives can be interconverted into one another. And this is where we see how an acid chloride can actually be converted into an ester. And it's simply by the reaction of um, the alcohol and the acid chloride. As you can see, here we're also utilizing pyridine in the molecule. Understand that sterically hindered alcohols um, react more slowly. So a primary alcohol can be isolated selectively in the presence of a secondary alcohol. So as you can see in the bottom in the example, in this molecule we have different types of alcohols present in the starting material. In the left corner of our molecule, we have a secondary alcohol. In the right side of our molecule, we have a primary alcohol. When we have such molecule and then we put it in the presence of um, an acetyl acid chloride, as you can see, selectively, we are going to be reacting that primary alcohol just because, as you can see, the reaction uh, proceeds slowly for the secondary alcohol, so it will react faster with the primary. So as you can see, that group that I'm highlighting gets incorporated to this corner of the molecule. That's where we see the formation of the ester to specifically the primary alcohol side of our compound. Acid chlorides are also used to synthesize amides. As you can see, we are going to be synthesizing an amide specifically by adding that acid chloride with ammonia. Okay? So, if we are just trying to incorporate an NH2 group, as you can see, we need two equivalents of the ammonia to afford the amide. Now, in these reactions, pyridine is not used, okay, to get rid of the HCl byproduct. Instead, we are going to be utilizing two equivalents of the amine. Remember that pyridine is an amine itself. So, during this reaction, we are just incorporating the amine just because it is the other reactant that is utilized. So we're just upping the equivalence. Instead of using one mole, we will be utilizing two moles to essentially do the same um, result or having the same effect of getting rid of the HCl. It's just that since the reactant is an amine, we're just utilizing it straight. Now, if we are trying to create amides that are substituted, and I mentioned previously how amides can have R groups around the nitrogen, understand that the way that we incorporate those groups next to the nitrogen, as you can see in the second and third example, is by specifically having amines that are substituted themselves, because remember, this group, is what gets incorporated to the carbon in the carbonyl in our acid chloride. So if your amine is substituted, then your amide at the nitrogen will be substituted, as you can see in the second and the third example. Now, acid chlorides can also be reduced using lithium aluminum hydrides to form a primary alcohol. 
We previously observed how lithium aluminum hydride is a strong reducing reagent to form a primary alcohol with just a carboxylic acid. So acid chlorides can undergo the same reaction. As you can see, that's a two-step process in which we're going to use excess of our reducing reagent, that lithium aluminum hydride, and then the second step is going to be water. Now, understand that for this reaction, um, that second step is the acidic workup that we are going to need overall. So let's go over the mechanism of it, which, as you can see, is in the bottom of the slide. Now, when you have an acid chloride, as you can see, lithium aluminum hydride is going to specifically uh, have a hydrogen be the nucleophile. That's why the arrow is going in between the hydrogen aluminum bond. So that's what gets added to the carbon in the carbonyl. And as we have seen uh, previously, the electrons go up to the oxygen. Once that hydrogen has been incorporated into the carbon of the carbonyl, then remember that in these processes, we are going to have specifically uh, the reformation of that carbonyl. So when the electrons come down from the oxygen, the carbonyl group is going to ref uh, reform and the chloride ion is going to leave out of the system. Now, as you can see here, we are going to have an aldehyde intermediate. And this aldehyde intermediate, understand that what happens is that it's not going to stay around. Remember that aldehydes, as we have seen in previous chapters, can also be reduced in the presence of these reagents. And that's exactly what happens. That once you have the formation of that aldehyde intermediate, it's not going to be sticking around. It's not going to be isolated. What is going to happen is that the aluminum... Um, the lithium aluminum hydride is going to have that hydride go and attack the carbon in the carbonyl, put the electrons up to the oxygen, okay, and it's going to be generating an alkoxide intermediate, and then understand that that second step where we have uh, the workup is because that alkoxide needs to be protonated. So in the last step of the reaction, as you can see, we're going to have protonation of the oxygen that is negatively charged, and that's how we form the primary alcohol. Now, there is a way in which the reduction can be stopped at the aldehyde, and that um, can be accomplished by using a modified form of lithium aluminum hydride okay in this case as you can see lithium tributoxy aluminum hydride instead of lithium aluminum hydride can be utilized and the structure for um, tributoxy aluminum hydride can be observed here in the bottom That reagent specifically will be able to take an acid chloride and then stop it at the aldehyde, okay? This reagent is more selective and reacts with acid chlorides faster than um, aldehydes. So the aldehyde can be specifically isolated. So understand that there is a way, but it's not lithium aluminum hydride. It's a modified reagent. So it, you know, in essence, it's cousins with it. Um, and as you can see, the difference between them is that you only have one source of that hydride ion coming from your aluminum reagent. And acid chloride can also be reacted with Grignard reagents. When that occurs, what we are going to be forming is a tertiary alcohol. So as you can see from the schematics that we have on the top, when we have an acid chloride react with a Grignard, 
understand that then there's going to be a workup that has to happen in step two. We're going to form that tertiary alcohol. The mechanism uh, for this process is going to be analogous, meaning similar to the lithium aluminum hydride uh, mechanism that we discussed previously. It's just that in this case, when we look at the mechanism which is shown in the bottom, the Grignard reagent is going to be functioning as a nucleophile and it's going to attack the carbon in the carbonyl. The electrons, as you have seen by now, it should be intuitive that every time we're attacking that carbon in the carbonyl, the electrons are going to go up to the oxygen. So we're always going to make that alkoxy uh, tetrahedral intermediate. When the electrons come down to reform the carbonyl carbon, then in, in the case of the acid chlorides, we are going to kick out that chlorine. That's going to be our living group. Now, when we reform our carbonyl, understand that in this case, we are making a ketone. Intermediate. Now, remember, ketones can also be reacted um, with Grignard reagents and understand that that ketone cannot be isolated under these conditions. So there's going to be another nucleophilic attack from the uh, carbon anion that is inherent to the Grignard reagent that is going to attach to the carbon in the carbonyl, putting the electrons up to the oxygen, and then understanding the last step of the reaction, what is going to happen is that we're going to have that oxygen ion that was created after the attack of the Grignard reagent is going to be protonated. And that's how we are forming the tertiary alcohol that it is in the corner. Another reaction that it is important to know for acid chlorides is the Gilman reagent. As you can see, the Gilman reagent is a lithium dialkyl cuprate reagent. So, this can be also utilized instead of a Grignard for these reactions. Now, understand that the Grignards form a tertiary alcohol. The Gilman reagent adds only once to the acid chlorides. So that means that for the Gilman reagent, we actually stop at the ketone. So as you can see here, we have an acid chloride and then we have our Gilman reagent. And as you can see, the alkyl group that it is attached to the Gilman reagent is what gets added uh, to the carbon in the carbonyl, or in a way, using the correct terminology, is what is going to be substituting the chlorine in your acid chloride. So, in this slide, we are going to have a summary of the versatility that we actually have for acid chlorides. So, as you can see, and we discussed already, Acid chlorides are going to give rise to many of the acid chloride derivatives. And as you can see here, there's a variety of functional groups that can be generated from them. This slide specifically summarizes all of them. So um, starting from specifically uh, the top, as you can see, I'm just going to number them. So acid chlorides can form esters by reacting specifically with an alcohol in the presence of pyridine. Acid chlorides can form an amide by reacting with excess, um, excess ammonia. And as you can see, 
number three and number four are going to be derivatives on number two. It's just that our amines are going to be substituted for the reaction number three and reaction number four. Acid chlorides on reaction number five in the presence of lithium aluminum hydride followed by a workup can form a primary alcohol. Remember that if you want to stop at the aldehyde this process, then we're going to be utilizing that tributoxy aluminum hydride reagent to stop at the aldehyde. Acid chlorides in reaction number seven can react with Grignard reagents to make a tertiary alcohol. If you want to specifically stop in reaction number eight, at the ketone, then we are going to be utilizing a Gilman reagent. In reaction number nine illustrates specifically how we can take that acid chloride and hydrolyze it back to the carboxylic acid. And in reaction 10 is where we learn how to synthesize an acid chloride specifically, and that's by just taking a carboxylic acid and reacting with thionyl chloride.